Thursday TV. You know, up until a week ago, I had never met anyone who had spent any time in prison. When I interviewed DJ Verrett, an amazing guy who had spent 16 and a half years in prison, it really made me realize that sometimes people aren't bad people, they just make bad decisions. And they end up through small bad choices, their environment, um, not having the right knowledge or education, they end up in this situation and then they're labeled and stigmatized for life. You know, when he came out, he had never even sent an email. 16 and a half years later, a lot of things have changed. I mean, don't we all know someone who's made those bad choices and, you know, has gone down the wrong path and could just as easily end up in prison for those choices? Yeah. Some of them just don't get caught. Yeah, it's, it's important for us to remember that, you know, the circumstances could have been a lot of us, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I have a job um, working at a retail place, just a, you know, part-time job, and this guy came in and he'd been recently um, let out of jail and I felt bad for the guy. I could tell he'd lost some skills. Yeah. He'd been gone a while and he really wasn't up to the interview process. He wasn't up to, you know, showing, yeah. representing himself well. And I watched it. I saw people just dismiss him and ignore him. And so it's got to be tough. You know, um, I gave him a couple pointers. I said, you might not want to call it, um, what do you call it, a halfway house that he was residing in. I yeah. said, call it a sober living. It sounds a little like produ more productive, you know, yeah. but it, it's got to be tough for these people. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, anyone who can help like that is a beautiful thing because they really do need the support. They need to develop interpersonal skills, social skills. I mean, when you're in prison, it's a very violent place. It's very different. He, he actually called it coming back to America, even though he'd been in America mm. the whole time, wow. because it's like being out on an island or just a whole different planet, yeah. the way that they think and how they do things. But I know I've had relatives who've gotten DUIs and um, gone down that path of, you know, doing small things that escalate. Mm -hmm. And over time, you can end up in prison. And one of the things that I found interesting is when he talked about his childhood, he said it wasn't until he saw what everyone had outside that he started to feel less than. Mm. And that was what really triggered this life of crime because they called it, you know, the drugs white gold. And for him, it must have seemed so unachievable or attainable to get it any other way. So I think that, again, it comes back to this idea of like building strong self-esteem, education. And I mean, in certain situations, growing up in the hood with a single parent, you might not get that, but you can change it in adulthood. You know, he went on after his 16 years, he used that time, it, what else can you do? You're alone for that long to think and to really get clear on what he needed to do to make a change in his life. And as an adult, he was able to make better choices. That's such an inspiring story because yeah. so many people are in that position and that's exactly what they need to do. He's yeah. like a beacon of light and hope. And, and they think their life's over and it's all done. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be that way. You can change at any point in your life. And even one of my other interviews, Sherry, she really said, you know, choose again. Yeah. Choose again. Yeah, and we can nice. choose yeah. again every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every yeah. moment, really. Yeah. yeah. I find yeah. a lot of people in prison, a lot of the young guys, um, African American particularly, they get there because a lot of them don't have that, fa that father structure in the house. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very, for people, yeah. people seem to think, well, no, it's, it, if you do your research, they don't have that father structure. Yeah. So if they can be in prison, get out of prison, and be the father they didn't have, maybe they won't go back. Yeah. But that's how you kind of, you know, change your, change your pattern of what you didn't have. Well, African Americans, I think the statistics are, you know, greater than any other minority. They end up in prison. Because I have a cousin, statistic. he was in prison, he was like maybe 13 years old, not prison, but he started yeah. at 13. And now um, he's in his 40s. And um, he's still in prison. Yeah. But, he, he, but my uncle was never in his life. Yeah, he so didn't he have a role model. Didn't have and, role and, model. This is the and thing my aunt did as best she could do, but it's yeah. like you really need a man to raise an educated yeah. man. Yeah. So, yeah. Simple as that. And once they've been yeah. in prison, unfortunately, the statistics are like 48% end up back there because they've never emailed, they've never worked, mm -hmm. they yeah. don't have a resume. So I think it's so important for them to have support, have education, reach out and I get mean, a mentor yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and even in okay. prison i mean he had access to yoga and all kinds of things but until he was ready he wasn't wanting to participate in that he ended up reading the entire encyclopedia britannica from a to z oh imagine the things you would know it's really you know, inspiring 16 years you have a lot of time to read yeah where did that come from you yeah. know that that deep down thing that That's came yeah. up at yeah. spark yeah because yeah. you know a lot of people yeah. they serve their time they get out they go right back to their old patterns yeah, yeah. yeah. well and look 16 years he was drinking and drugging in prison 
prison. Yeah. It was right at the very end, I think his last six to 12 months, where he really turned the corner and started listening to that spark because it was there all along, mm -hmm. but he ignored it and he numbed it and he pushed it mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. Well, look, as always, a great conversation. Let's leave it there. But I hope that if you meet somebody in a store like Alan that needs a second chance, that you give them that, be less judgmental and we all be more open-minded. And if there's someone that you know that's been down this path, really help and encourage them because they need a lot of support. I hope that you can continue the conversation online. Let us know your thoughts and comments and we look forward to seeing you next time on Kirsty TV. Thank you.